Oh boy. So I got these three electronics products all from AliExpress. And the great thing about them is not only that they were super cheap, but also that they work perfectly fine at first sight. But the devil lies in the details. And thus, by having a closer look at the output voltage, we can easily see that they're not outputting a stable DC voltage, but instead one with lots of ripples and noise. And that can be a big problem for certain electronic devices, meaning these products are useless, right? Well, luckily not, because after doing some investigation, I realized that by adding a certain component to those circuits that only cost around 50 cents, they work perfectly fine. So join me on this adventure, in which I will show you how you can improve pretty much any circuit like this. And maybe you will have an idea at the end why the original manufacturer did not include the magic fixing component to begin with. Because I'm clueless. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by Keysight's virtual event Keysight World Live from the Lab. And don't click away because there you can win pro-grade test gear including an 8-channel 6GHz oscilloscope. So sign up quickly using my link below because the next event day is May the 16th where they explore real-world performance of batteries, DC to DC converters and IoT devices. Very interesting stuff. And best of all, by using my link, you'll get an extra entry into Keysight's huge test gear giveaway. I wish you good luck. Now first off, let's focus on these two products here that were featured in my latest AliExpress hidden gem video. The first one is this super beefy buck converter power supply that can basically lower its input voltage and make it adjustable while also featuring a current limit feature. This makes it a pretty decent lab bench power supply alternative, with the only downside that it came with a noisy output. In this case at 5V and 4A, it was around 1.8V peak to peak of noise. Of course, the bigger the current draw, the bigger this problem becomes. And that brings us to the first question. Why is noise so bad? To answer that, let's hook up a generic 5V circuit to the power supply's outputs, which at first sight seems to work perfectly fine. But since the output voltage comes with a lower minimum and a higher maximum than 5V, there is a possibility that we leave the tolerance band of one of the ICs, meaning there is no guarantee that the circuit will work forever. Other problems can be that reference voltages are not stable which can mess up data signals, ADC or DAC conversions, error amplifiers and much much more. To avoid that, most manufacturers say that 1% of noise on the output voltage is fine, which corresponds to 50 mV peak to peak with a 5V DC output. In our case though, this value is way higher. Or is it? because some viewers speculated that I measured incorrectly with my oscilloscope probes. And yes, after removing the ground alligator wire that apparently picked up lots of noise and replacing it with a ground spring, you can see that the measured noise value went down noticeably. But we are not done here, because I also forgot to limit the bandwidth of my scope to 20 MHz which is the industry standard when measuring noise. And now we can see that there really was no big noise problem to begin with. I simply made a mistake. So big apology to this low cost beefy power supply board here, which I can now fully recommend if you're looking for something like this. But do not worry, even when measuring correctly, the second board still features lots of noise slash ripple problems. Before getting to that, let me quickly summarize that this circuit is a small UPS, aka uninterruptible power supply. That means that when we connect USB power, we get 5 volts on the outputs, which is still present when disconnecting USB, because now the inserted batteries power the outputs. 
This is really useful if you need an appliance to run 24 7 without interruptions. And of course, as soon as you once again get power on the inputs, the batteries charge up. So at first glance, a pretty useful circuit. But like T's before, it comes with a noise problem that are measured once again while slowly cranking up the output current. As an example, at 0.5 amps we got 200 millivolts peak to peak, which is 4% of the output voltage. And near its maximum output current at 2.5 amps, we got 760 millivolts, which is 15%, not good. Now to fix this, there are basically two ways we can go with the first one being the more complex one, in which we need to understand how this switching boost converter works and then precisely improve slash change targeted parts and do lots of testing. But let's face it, we're all lazy. So let's start with the simpler second route, called post-regulation. For that, I firstly had to remove one resistor of the circuit and replace it with another one, in order to increase the output voltage to around 7 volts. This works because the altered resistor was part of the voltage divider that creates the feedback voltage for the main IC. This voltage is around 1.245 volts and thus by increasing this one resistance, the output voltage needs to increase as well in order to still create the 1.245 volt feedback voltage. Easy, right? Well, maybe not that easy, but the next step definitely is, because now all we have to do is adding a 5 volt linear voltage regulator to the outputs along with one filter capacitor. And we are basically done here. Now you can see that by drawing current from this new output, we got no noise, while on its inputs, we still got the noisy voltage. What the linear regulator does here is turning the voltage offset into heat, which is of course not as efficient as before and we need a higher input voltage that we can drop down from, but it certainly solves the noise problem. And most of the time such pre-regulation is actually done by the device you hook up, like this Raspberry Pi here that has its own regulators that drop the voltage to 3.3 volts that, like expected, does not feature any noise. Ok, with the easy route out of the way and the UPS once again outputting its initial voltage, let's try to go the other route, by firstly understanding how the utilized boost converter circuit functions. We mainly got input capacitors, a coil, diode, output capacitors and a switching element like it is required in this schematic. And in a nutshell, all that is happening is when the switch closes, energy gets stored in the inductor's magnetic fields, which then gets pumped to the outputs as soon as the switch opens. This way, the output voltage can be higher than the input voltage. And the job of the output capacitors here is to basically suck up the energy bursts and create a smooth output voltage. So needless to say, there were my prime suspects. So I started my investigation by firstly measuring their temperature in action, which was around 40C for the big electrolytic ones and close to 50C for the small ceramic one. In my opinion that was a bit too high and the problem might be that at the switching frequency of this converter's 575 kHz, the used capacitors might act more as inductors than capacitors. I know it sounds a bit crazy, but this theory was definitely confirmed by my LCR meter. And if you're completely confused right now, then check out my previous video about choosing the right capacitor type. So the simple solution was getting some good quality multi-layer ceramic capacitors, that partly even came with a lower capacitance than the original ones. And after soldering them in place, we can see that the noise problem pretty much disappeared. Awesome! And the crazy thing here is that you can get these two capacitors for just 50 cents. Which begs the question why the manufacturer does not simply increase the price by that amount and include the fitting capacitors. But anyway, other than that, it is always a good idea to measure temperatures to find a weak spot. 
So if for example your coil gets too hot, you know that either the inductance or magnetic saturation current is too low and thus you need to replace it. Or if your control IC gets too hot, you should consider adding more or better bypass capacitors next to it. And in the worst case, if your PCB design is garbage, then you cannot really do much other than adding an LC low pass filter to the outputs. But let me tell you that this also comes with its own challenges, which along with the inductor selection, I can tell you all about in a previous video. And with these tips in mind, we should be able to easily repair my last cheap circuits, which is this mini boost converter that I love to use for small projects. And I said loved because eventually I found out that with certain loads, its output becomes pretty much unusable and it also self-destructs at this point. So once again, I started with the simplest fix by adding a 2.2 microfarad ceramic capacitor directly to the outputs. And guess what? That immediately solved all the problems. Which is nice you know, but once again, why is such a capacitor not included by the manufacturer? But anyway, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If so, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time.